Hello, my name's Mark and welcome to Biodiversity Shorts. Now, we're going to do some bird watching today, but first I want to show you something called eye stalk ablation. Now imagine for a moment that you are sitting down and you've got a big bucket of live prawns in front of you and you're scooping them out and picking them up one by one. Eye stalk ablation is the removal of one or more eye stalks and this is done to the female prawns in order to make them produce their eggs in captivity and to make them produce more eggs than they normally would. No one's sure why this works, but it does work. And there are a number of different methods that are used. Each method has its own risks of infection and death for the prawns and their own efficiencies as well. So it depends on where you are in the world, which method is done, but generally, it is uh, cheap to use, cheap labour to do this by hand. Okay, now that you know what eye stalk ablation is, let's head for the coast. We are near the town of Cohimas in Ecuador, staying at a place called Coco Solo, which organises various eco tours. And I'm here with Ricardo here, he's driving the canoe, and we are doing a bit of birding in this beautiful mangrove tidal system here. This is a great egret that is found in many places around the world. This guy may be a migrant from the US spending the winter down here in Ecuador, or he may be a permanent resident of this area. The Wimbrel is also a migrant who breeds in the subarctic north. I spotted a little blue heron who was very shy and difficult to get close to. These cormorants weren't too bothered by our presence. The fact that there were two of us in the canoe and we were being very quiet and slow moving allowed us to get relatively close to these birds. I didn't have a very long lens and all this footage was handheld. This here is the rufous necked wood rail. You can see him flipping over leaves to get at the insects underneath. I was very lucky to see him, even the guide was very excited to see him and they haven't done too well with habitat destruction here in Ecuador. They have been sighted in New Mexico as a new species and it recently caused a big storm with the birding community in the US there. These little sandpipers were also very entertaining to watch. We would just let the canoe drift very slowly towards them and we could almost get on top of them. And when we got too close, even when they were running away, they'd still be eating on the move. This yellow legs was less impressed with our presence and I'm having a guess he was even trying to scare us away. Another migrant, these birds breed in the boreal forests from Alaska to Quebec. This grey plover is an extremely long range migrant and he breeds in the northern coasts of Alaska, Russia and Canada. These doe witches use their long bills to probe for invertebrates in the mud and again these are migrants from Northern America. The breast meat of the yellow crowned night heron was apparently considered a delicacy to the people in Louisiana, but of course now it is illegal to hunt these herons. I was lucky to get this shot of him actually making a kill catching a small fish there. This is a very handsome animal and I really hope they are not hunted here in Ecuador. They have some beautiful crest feathers which you can't see in these shots but they're also hunted for their feathers which would end up in women's hats. Finally I spotted this Kokoi heron which is one of the few permanent residents which I spotted while on this little boat tour. In addition to birds, 
when we got closer to the actual roots of the mangroves, there were various mollusks which would attach themselves to the roots here. And there were also barnacles on some of them, but a lot of the roots were covered in a really black, slimy stuff. I don't know why these particular roots here are actually clean, but underneath most of them, there were barnacles everywhere. Whether this is a healthy system here, I'm not really sure. There also were a couple of types of crabs. We spotted hermit crabs in those same shells and this uh, very conspicuous red clawed crab which was running around the branches. Now this is where I get back to prawns and shrimp. This dam here is actually put for a shrimp farm and if we have a zoom out we'll switch to Google Earth here you can see that this whole area is basically a gigantic shrimp farm with lots and lots of ponds all over the place. Unfortunately, mangroves are in the perfect terrain to have very large shrimp farms. And this has destroyed a lot of the mangrove forests, particularly in Ecuador and also all over the world. And if they're not taken over by shrimp farms and shrimp farming, even in the west in Australia, there are big areas of mangrove forests that are being taken over for residential purposes. Mangrove forests are also an excellent natural protection against tsunamis. As for the small amount of mangrove forest left here, I believe the only reason it hasn't been cut down is because it provides protection for the actual shrimp farms themselves and without them the tidal action would actually wash the shrimp farms away. Ecuador does have the Manglares Chirute Ecological Reserve but even looking at that from satellite images it is surrounded on all sides by prawn and shrimp farming. And also under the water, these areas are very important as the breeding areas of many species of locally mangrove dwelling fish and also ocean going fish as well. Okay, I hope that next time you go to buy some prawns or eat some prawns, you'll think about where they come from and what impact they have on the environment. This is Biodiversity Shorts and I thank you again for watching and if you'd like to watch some more videos i've got my previous videos here there's one on woodpeckers up here and there's another one on ticks up here you can click on those to watch those and if you would like to see more please click below to subscribe thanks again my name's mark i'll see you next time